So I've been wanting to do this video for a while now and basically it's going to be my top 10 best characters in One Piece outside of the Straw Hat crew. So you're not going to get characters like Luffy, Zoro, obviously people in the Straw Hat crew. They're not going to be in this list but th these are basically the characters that I think are the, uh, well, the best characters obviously. Now what I mean by best characters is these people might not necessarily be the most powerful. You might hate these characters, you might love them. Um, but basically to me they're just the characters where I can't wait to see where the story goes at the end of One Piece You know, I'm really invested in these characters even though they're not part of the main crew And uh, this list is in no particular order These are just the basically the first 10 names that I wrote down where in my mind it was just like I can't wait to see where these characters go So like I said, this list is in no, no order. It's just uh, my 10 best characters Starting off the list is uh, Buggy. Now Buggy was introduced early on in One Piece. He's probably one of the longest characters who's like kind of stuck around, but instantly I like Buggy. I don't know if you guys have seen Transformers, the old Transformers 80s TV show, but he kind of reminds me of Starscream Buggy. He's kind of like a bad guy, but you kind of like him and you, you, you root him for him in a way, especially during the arc of Impel Down. You know, Buggy were one of the best characters. Buggy's used a lot for comedy, but he also finds himself in situations where he's managed to, you know, gather a big crew. He's, a, he's spent time as a warlord. You know, all things that were at the beginning of the series, you'd have never really expected it from him. You know, he was kind of a joke character, and he still is a bit of a joke character today, obviously. But, you know, Buggy is an interesting one. And obviously his past as well also makes him interesting. The fact that he was on the Pirate King ship, you know, Gold Roger's ship. The fact that he was like best friends with Shanks or like, you know, they had that that, that friend, that love-hate, I think he had like a little love-hate relationship with Shanks where obviously he were his best friend but he were also a bit of a rival as well. And to see that them two have gone off in totally different paths as adults is pretty interesting, you know, obviously Shanks has gone on to be super successful and buggy. He's kind of found his way into success as of late, but, you know, I won't call him a successful pirate. But anyway, buggy, there's who's starting off this list. Another pirate on the list is Whitebeard. Now Whitebeard, in the story of One Piece, I remember before Marineford, we never really spent too much time with Whitebeard. I think we only ever saw him in like maybe three episodes. Might have been a couple more, but I know it was very limited episodes to say that we were 400 episodes in a summer by the time we got to Marineford. I remember, uh, you know, Whitebeard is kind of like a stoic character, you know, for instance, whereas I was saying Buggy's used for a lot of comedy, you know, there was hardly any comedy with Whitebeard. It was all seriousness. And uh, his devil fruit power alone would make him one of the best characters, in my opinion. But not just his devil fruit power, you know, if you take away his devil fruit power, just his character alone, you know, what he stood for, you know, he was like a family man and all these pirates underneath him, you know, he called them sons and whatnot. And all the respect that everyone had for him, it, you know, during the, um, during the Marine Ford arc, Whitebeard were just something else, he were an absolute beast and, you know, it was one of the saddest, spoiler alert, it was one of the saddest deaths for me seeing Whitebeard go. Next on the list, we've got Garp. Now, Garp, in a lot of ways, Garp is kind of, he's a little bit like Buggy and Whitebeard, which is just a coincidence that I've done them first and now that I'm getting to Garp. But Garp is a character where it can be used for comedy and it's great, but it can also be used for a serious moment and it's great. No, before Marine Ford, he's used a lot for comedy. I remember in his first introduction, you know, he beats up Kobe and that other guy. And, you know, obviously it's funny. And then we learn that he's like Luffy's granddad. And then we kind of understand why Garp's a bit of an idiot himself because it's obviously something that runs in the family. But his serious moments at, um, at Marine Ford, like when he's up there on the podium with Ace and he's having a chat with him. And, you know, we obviously know his backstory with uh, Gold Roger and he's on a similar sort of level as the Pirate King as far as power goes. And as far as we know in the story of One Piece, Garp don't have a devil fruit power. Um, he's just like a hacky user and, you know, obviously he's an absolute beast. So we know that he's a strong character, but the fact that he can also be used for comedy and stuff like that, that's what makes Garp, to me, one of the best characters. And, you know, I can't wait to see where his story goes. But also, I can't wait to see where his story goes, but I can't wait to see where he's been as well. We hadn't had too much, like, we know kind of what he was up to in the past, Garp, but um, there's also a lot that can be filled in, which I think will just flesh him out even more and make him even more of a good character. Another one on the list is Jinbei. Now, I know Jinbei might technically be classed as um, part of the Straw Hat crew now, but 
I liked Jimbe way before, or many episodes before he was even considered to be joining the uh, Straw Hats. I remember when Luffy first met him in the prison, um, you know, he was all chained up and Jimbe just like Whitebeard and Garp, he has the like kind of stoicness about him. He's not really used for comedy much, although he does have a few comedy moments which are pretty funny because of his expressions and stuff. I guess because he's like a fish man, he, he pulls some funny expressions and stuff. But Jimbe is a very serious character and I can't remember, I can't remember his, his exact reasons for helping Luffy get Ace, but just how much dedicated he was to helping Luffy get Ace, it, it really showed a lot about him and just... He was like one of the MVPs for me during the Marine Ford arc. I mentioned Marine Ford a lot here, but it's one of the best arcs in One Piece, and it it, it does uh, involve a lot of these great characters. So you know, Jim Bill, like I say, he was one of the MVPs MVPs of uh, of the Marine Ford arc. He always seemed to be there to save Luffy at a crucial moment, and you know, we saw how much of a beast he was. You know, he don't have a devil fruit power, but his fishman abilities—I think it's the fishman karate or something like that, or fishman jiu-jitsu, whatever. He was doing some pretty sick stuff with like the waves and things like that. So yeah, Jinbei, he was a cool character instantly right off the bat, which is why I had to include him in this list, even if he is technically classed as part of the Straw Hats now. He, he was just that good of a character before he was in the Straw Hats. I had to add him to the list. Another Navy member on the list we've got is Smoker. Now he was introduced early on as well, around the same time as Buggy. And uh, you know, he's still a guy who's prevalent now, but even early on, I remember I liked Smokey, even though he's classed as a bad guy to our good guy in Luffy, he se like he clearly seemed different to all the other marines that had come before him and even ones that have come after him. Like Smokey's a bit of a rogue, I'd say, like, you know, he, he wants to bring about justice, but he's willing to go outside the law to do it, but he has his own code of justice that he won't break, so, you know, he's not someone who, I'm trying to think of another marine to compare him to. For instance, Smoker, he comes across as a guy who'd do anything to get the bad guys as in the pirates, but at the same time, he's also willing to work with the pirates. If you take um, Punk Hazard, for example, you know, he was initially there, well, he was initially there to find out what the pirate signal was about, I think, but, you know, he, you could tell that he wanted to basically, like, arrest Law and things like that if he could, but then in the end, he ended up having to work with Law and Luffy. Smoke is the sort of guy where you can tell that he really wants to get the pirate, but he always comes up short. But I think that's kind of what makes him such a good character. Like, you can tell that, like, early on, Smoker was a badass, but then as the series progressed, everyone kind of caught up to him and, in some ways, surpassed him, which kind of made him seem weak. But he always puts up a fight in that, and it's, it's more about what he stands for, why I like Smoker, you know, his morals and things like that. He's a bit of a rogue. Like, he doesn't necessarily work within the law to get his job done. He works within his own law to get the job done. He's got his own moral code that he sticks by him. Even though like his main job is to get the pirates, obviously, he's also willing to work with the pirates if it's going to benefit like the greater good. So that's why we've seen him work with uh, Luffy a couple of times. So, And it'll be interesting to see where Smoker goes, which is why he's one of the best characters to me. My friend once compared Smoker to Smoker and Luffy to Garp and Gold Roger. Like, Smoker's going to be the guy who's just always kind of on Luffy's tail. Now, a lot of people have said that Kobe's going to be, become that, and he might do, but for now, I think it is Smoker who kind of took that role, and it's going to be interesting to see where he goes, which is why, Smok which is why um, Smoker's one of the best characters to me. Coming up on the list next, we've got Akainu. Now, a lot of people absolutely hate this character. It's crazy, to, it's crazy to see how much people hate him, but that just goes to show how good of a character he is because nobody hates him because it's like, oh, he's a waste of time. What's this guy doing in One Piece? They hate him because of how much damage he's done in the story of One Piece. I mean, obviously, spoiler alert, he killed Ace and he was just so determined to do it as well. And he also wanted to kill Luffy, you know. He was on a rampage in Marine Ford. But that's what makes him such a good character. I remember, um, I remember, it, like, the, the, they did really well then, um, building his character up. I mean, it was on his subtle little things, but, you know, when the Kenu finally did step into action, he was so devastating. You know, he was raining down those fists of lava and boiling pirates alive in the, um, in, like, uh, in Marine Ford. You guys know what I'm on about if you've seen it, you know, the, the fists of lava were hitting the water and everyone were getting boiled alive. It's like a character that can do that is something else. And that's what makes him such a good character. It's like, what is this guy capable of? You know, what limits will he stop at? I mean, 
in Marineford, you know, one of his own men, Kobe, obviously, pretty much just a, a young kid to Akenu, you know, he was begging him to stop and Akenu wasn't having none of it. I think he was going to pretty much punch a hole through Kobe's chest, which is obviously when Shanks had to step in and stop him, you know, badass moment. I'm not even that much of a big Shanks super fan, but that was a sick moment, I, I, I've got to admit it. But Akenu, just for his ruthlessness and, you know, he, he's got like a raw passion to bring that justice, but... It's a raw, reckless, you know, it's a passion where it's like, man, you don't want to get on this guy, you don't want to cross this guy if you're a pirate, because if you do, it doesn't look like it's going to end well for you. But, you know, just the fact that he's such a, you know, I guess he's a monster in it, I, I guess such because of the fact that he's such a monster, um, Akenu makes the list as one of the best characters, you know, and... You know, it ain't like I want Akenu to, you know, just arrest everyone and that. I want to see Akenu get his justice, but when he does, I think it's going to be so good. And, you know, that's because another best character, probably someone from the Straw Hat crew, is probably going to give him it. And when when they, when Akenu gets what's coming to him, I think we're all going to enjoy that moment. Coming up next on the list is Bartelomo. I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong, so if I'm saying it wrong... There'll be a picture on there of uh, who I'm talking about anyway, but it's the Straw Hat super fan. Now, I've only just recently met this guy in uh, Dress Rosa in the Coliseum. I was kind of thinking, oh, what's this guy about? But then as soon as I found out that he was like a Straw Hat super fan and he really loved Luffy and Zoro and I'm pretty he loves all the crew, really. But once I found out what his character was all about, I was 100% in on him. And he's just kind of like a comic relief to uh, One Piece. He's obviously strong as well with his barrier fruit. And a lot of people have uh, speculated where that, that where that's going to come back in. People obviously say that Luffy's going to be about to be finished off by someone and all of a sudden, boom, the barrier's going to go up around him. You know, in a future war I'm talking about here, I've heard a lot of people speculate about that. Just his character and his light-heartedness is a complete joker. Nearly everything he does cracks me up on that. And whenever he's on screen saying something funny, I've got a big grin on my face, so I could not put um, Bartolomeo on the list. Coming up next, we have uh, Tashigi. Now, this might be a strange one, but she's a, she's an interesting character for me because uh, because of her connection to Zoro. I remember when she was kind of first introduced, she was like a little bit of a foil for Zoro, and I think that's going to continue throughout One Piece simply because of the fact that they both few swords, obviously. But she really became a good character for me in Punk Hazard, just the way that, because obviously Smoker and Tashigi, they're part of G5 and they have their own little unit or whatever, just the way that the men in the unit treated her. You know, they treated her with real respect and that, which kind of made me treat her with respect or think of her with respect. You know, there was a moment where the smile, poison or whatever it was on uh, Punk Hazard, that was all coming in. And I hope you guys remember this moment, but like she was telling all the men to get out and they was getting out and the doors were closing and she was going to be like the last one making sure everyone gets out. But then all of a sudden the men like kind of pick her up and they chuck her through the door and they kind of they basically save her and and they get like turned to stone or whatever. But it was such a heartbreaking moment moment and that and it was so passionate it were it were crazy it really dragged me in and it was like oh man you know I, I just really felt for Tishigi in that moment and just the whole situation it, it, it was a small arc um, punk hazard but there were some great moments in it to do with Smoker and Tishigi which you know solidified them both on this list of the best characters also best characters you know, she's got a lot stronger from when she was first introduced and I think she's going to continue to get a lot stronger. It's going to be interesting to see her try to arrest Zoro in the future because I imagine she's going to continue to try and arrest Zoro every time she sees him. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Smoker and Tashigi are going to kind of like, once again, work with the Straw Hearts. I, I can see that being like a common thing. Similar to how Garp and uh, Gold Roger had to work together to defeat Rox, Rox de Beck. I think Smoker and Luffy are going to team up. They have already teamed up more than once, but I think the team up's going to con continue. And obviously Tashigi, with her being uh, Smoker's right-hand woman, uh, she's obviously going to be all part of that. But yeah, she makes the list for one of the best characters that I can't wait to see where she goes. Also on the list is Law. Now, I remember Law's first introduction. My friend was a big, massive Law fan. For Law's introduction, I thought he was a pretty cool character and that, but to be honest, I thought the Bear and his crew were a bit more cooler than Law. He seemed like a funny, interesting character. But for Law's introduction, um, I wasn't that overly hyped on him. But then the more I got to know him throughout Punk Hazard and uh, Dress Rosa, and I've just recently watched Law's backstory, and oh man, I'm fully invested in Law now. The story between Law and... Uh, Do Flamingo's brother, that's one of the saddest stories in One Piece, um, man, I, that was one of those stories where I was watching it and I could have cried, but that's one of those stories that really explains a lot. As 
I think that's one of the things that One Piece does best, you know, it'll introduce a character that you think you know, and then all of a sudden you get a backstory, and oh man, it really hits you in the gut with a gut punch. Law makes the list because of the possibilities of where his character can go, simply because of the fact that he's a D, and he's kind of like, interested in the history of it, and uh, what it all means. I think that makes him one of the best characters, because it's like, he's kind of like a mystery box he's going to unravel, or at least I think he is, he's going to kind of like, start to unravel and it reveal mysteries that we just don't know yet. There's a lot of talk going on about maybe that he's a member of um, S.W.O.R.D. So who knows, man, that's why I just can't wait to see where Law's story goes. And finishing off the list is another character who's kind of connected to Law and Luffy, and that's Kid. I remember Kid's first introduction was around the same time as Law got introduced, which is, I think, why um, Law's introduction didn't really stand out as much to me, because out of all the, um, I think it's the supernovas, they, they call them, out of all the supernovas that were introduced... It was Kid who stood out to me as, yo, who's this guy? I want to know more about this guy. Uh, I think they say that, like, his bounty is so high because he basically just kills anyone, whereas people like Luffy is not that reckless. He doesn't just go around killing anyone. Not only did he get a good introduction as a good bad guy, you know, they built him up as uh, to be reckless and things like that, but he's also got one of the coolest character designs in all of One Piece, to be honest. I think he looks like one of the best, best characters. You know, he's got the guns, he's got the sword, um, you know... And he's also got one of the best devil fruit powers. He's, he's basically Magneto. I mean, Magneto's one of the coolest mutants, so when it translates over to One Piece, why wouldn't he be one of the coolest One Piece characters? Of course he is. And also, we're hit. We don't see much about Kid uh, later on in One Piece. I think we will eventually go back to him. You know, we hear stories of him challenging Shanks and stuff like that, and I think he lost his arm. Um, but yeah, basically, Kid makes a list because from his right off the bat, from his introduction, it was like, yo, who's this guy? I can't wait to see capable of and stuff like that. Also, he was one of the characters who he instantly believed about the One Piece and um, he was willing to challenge people who challenged him on the One Piece. So it was like, he, like Luffy, has this kind of belief that there's something out there and he's heading for it himself. The whole trio of Luffy, Kid and Law, I think there's something going on there. Although I've heard, I've heard the order said that all the super Novas was introduced introduced kind of like spare in the moment sort of thing he, he never had any plans for those characters i find that hard to believe because i feel like luffy's the good pirate kids the bad pirate and law's like the neutral pirate and all three of and these three characters they kind of all stood up in this moment that hopefully i'll find a picture of to put on screen but i feel like this moment was too iconic and each one of these characters stands for kind of totally different things where it's like i feel like there is a big plan for these three characters and we're just yet to see it a lot of people have speculated that Kid, Law and Luffy are going to be the people to defeat Kaido, which I'd like to see, but I think there could be something even bigger there. I mean, think about this, guys. Like I'm saying, we've got... It's not exactly the good, the bad and the ugly, but it's the good, the bad and the neutral. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think on that one. Anyway, I might do another video if uh, there's if I can think of any more sort of speculative ideas on what I'm thinking of here. But anyway, if you guys have liked this video, let me know who some of your favourite characters are in One Piece. Also, guys, everybody that I've mentioned in this list, there's so much more that I could say about them and that I'm just not remembering right now. You know, these are some amazing characters and I'm only doing them a little bit of justice compared to how they are actually portrayed in the TV show. So you let me know what you guys think of them. What are your top 10 best characters outside of the Straw Hats? But anyway, you guys let me know. There's also some characters that, that could have made the honourable mentions list that um, I might do another video on. So look out for that one as well. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time.